Hi everybody, it's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we're continuing our video series on the science practices of AP Biology, meaning the stuff that you need to be able to do in order to pass the AP exam uh, by continuing with science practice three, um, which is about experiments and questions, I think. I, that was the title of it. I don't quite remember off the top of my head, but we're getting into 3.C, 3.D, and 3.E today. Um, and 3.C is identifying experimental procedures that are aligned to the question, including identifying dependent and independent variables, identifying appropriate controls, and justifying appropriate controls. All right, so this is all part of what we call experimental design. All right, and there's going to be a lot of questions on the AP exam that are, hey, here's an experiment, um, identify the dependent variable, identify the dependent variable, um, tell us why this is a good control or which of these options is going to be a good control for your experiment. And hopefully these are going to be terms that you've heard before, um, perhaps in another science class, but it's a good thing to hash them out here before uh, we take the AP exam because there's definitely going to be questions like this. Um, then we'll cover 3.D and 3.E later in the video, but that won't take quite as long. Um, so what I want to start with here at first is defining independent and dependent variable, and I'm going to say those words again and again and again and again and again throughout this video. Uh, so just be ready for it. I won't ramble too long, but... Um, so in science, right, any question that you ask is like, hmm, why does this work the way it does? Or what happens if I do this? Or why is this the way it is in the natural world? Science is our goal of trying to figure that out, right? And uh, to set up an experiment, what you need, or what every experiment is all about, is testing whether the independent variable has an effect on the dependent variable or not, and if so, what is that effect and why? Um, and so what these two variables are, okay, Every experiment is centered around these two ideas, that the independent variable is the factor manipulated or controlled by researchers, aka what is being tested in an experiment, and the dependent variable, the factor that is being measured uh, or being measured that is predicted to be affected by the independent variable. Okay, so here's a super duper simple experiment right over here. Um, if I have three uh, pots of plants here, okay, and I give them varying amounts of water, that is what I'm changing. That's the independent variable. Um, and I want to see how the amount of water affects how the plant grows. Okay? And if I'm trying to measure how the plant grows or the, how much the plant grows in response to the amount of water I give it, okay, there's three possible dependent variables that I can measure here. The size of the plant, the number of the leaves, and whether or not it's dead. Okay, So uh, there's, a, there's an experiment right there. Independent variable, amount of water, um, dependent variable, the growth of plant. All right, so if I run this experiment, I give it one plant a little bit of water, uh, one plant a medium amount of water and one plant a lot of water, okay? and then I measure the result. Clearly here, the independent variable, as we can tell by the size of the plants and the number of leaves, um, and with the fact whether it's living or dead, clearly the independent variable does have an effect on the dependent variable. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and that gets back into our, uh, our previous video, is when do you accept the null hypothesis, when do you accept the alternative hypothesis. You accept the null when the independent does not have an effect on the dependent but you reject it when it does. Okay, so uh, let's move on before I ramble too long about uh, independent dependent variables. Another way to identify what's being tested and what's being measured is by looking at a graph. Okay, so it says on a typical, typical graph, the independent variable is plotted along the x-axis while the dependent variable is plotted along the y-axis. Okay, so check it out. Here's my, uh, if I just show you this graph, Okay, you should be able to tell me what this experiment was about. And coincidentally, it's the same kind of experiment that we just had on the previous page. Um, how does the amount of water that I give some plants affect the plant growth rate? Okay, it's super easy when you're looking at a graph like this because the independent variable is always, almost always going to be plotted along the x-axis. Now, if there were multiple, uh, maybe perhaps multiple lines or more, multiple different uh, colors of bars or that kind of thing on this graph, maybe the independent variable would be slightly different. But most often on a typical graph, you can find the independent variable on the x-axis, right? So here's, like I just said, independent variable down here is amount of water, and the dependent variable is the growth rate. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's a super easy way to tell which is which. Um, and a fun way I like to remember this is that if you're independent, you don't need your ex, right? As in like, if you're an independent person, you don't need your ex-boyfriend or girlfriend or something like that. But that's a good way to remember that the independent variable is on the x-axis. All right, so there you have it. Again, um, if I were to wrap that up in 10 words, it'd be like, okay, um, the independent variable is what's being tested. The dependent variable is what's being measured. Just remember that, 
okay, and apply that to questions like this one. So this one uh, is from an AP exam. It says, a massive increase in the growth of specific species of algae resulted in record-breaking levels of a potentially dangerous toxin being released into the water. A researcher hypothesizes that the unusual growth of this algal species was caused by an increase in water temperature. The researcher designs an experiment to test the hypothesis. Which of the following is the dependent variable in the researcher's experiment? Okay, so now you need to know the difference between the independent and the dependent variable and be able to pick them out in a hypothetical experiment. All right, so uh, take a second if you want to try and try this on your own. Otherwise, I'm going to move on to the answer and explain why it is the right answer. And the answer is A, uh, the growth of the algae. All right, that is what he is measuring. Okay, he or she is measuring um, the... Uh, excuse me, the independent variable is what they're testing, right? So uh, if they have a hypothesis that water temperature um, increases or decreases algal growth, okay, then our independent variable for a particular experiment that they're going to set up is going to be the temperature of the water. All right, so how does the temperature of the water affect the growth of the algae? And thus, the algae is the dependent variable. Okay, so uh, to talk about controls here, we're going to set up another experiment here. I'm, I made this one up myself. Um, and the research question of this experiment that I made up is, how does X antibiotic affect E. coli growth? All right, so I'm going to have two uh, Petri dishes of E. coli um, in my experiment here. I'm going to treat one of them with an antibiotic, and the other I'm not going to treat with an antibiotic to serve as a comparison point. Okay, so uh, it, if you're, you know, uh, maybe I should have rewound a little bit, but that's okay. Um, the independent variable in this case, what I'm testing is my antibiotic, and what I'm measuring to see whether or not the antibiotic works or if it has an effect on bacterial growth is, well, the number of E. coli colonies that I'm going to find on my Petri dishes. Okay, so uh, there's our independent, there's our dependent. Um, let's get this experiment moving. Hey, but here's the thing. All right, whenever you're setting up an experiment, there's some other factors that you have to take into consideration. All right, a true experiment should really only tell you uh, how the independent variable has an effect on the dependent variable. All right, so good experimental design makes sure that you're only determining the effect that the independent has on the dependent, and that's it. Okay, so between my two Petri dishes, if I were to set up this experiment, I would have to make sure it's the same type of bacteria or the same strain or whatever. They're growing in the same environment. They have the same growing conditions, maybe the, the same agar or whatever, right? Uh, the same amount of light, whatever. The same amount of bacteria I put in each plate to, to streak the plate with. Um, they need to have the same size petri dish and they need to be in the same growth medium. Um, all that stuff needs to be kept the same so I can test whether or not the antibiotic affects their growth. Because if you think about it, all these other factors will affect the growth of the bacteria, but if I'm trying to determine if the antibiotic and the antibiotic only is affecting the, uh, um, the growth of the E. coli, okay, then I have to control these variables, all right, and that's what they're called. They're called controlled variables. All of those have to be kept the same between my two Petri dishes, and the only thing that should be different about the two is whether or not there's antibiotic there. Okay, so those are controlled variables. And a good experiment, experimental design, makes sure that those controlled variables are constant. Everything is kept the same um, between those two. All right, but I don't want you to get that confused with what I'm about to tell you about. All right, so once again, here's my experiment. There's no antibiotic in this Petri dish, and there's antibiotic in this Petri dish, assuming there's the same amount of bacteria, all that stuff, um, same growing conditions, same medium, all that. And uh, check it out. I want you to not get the controlled variables and the control group confused here, okay? So uh, this is going to be important to know, and this is what you're going to have to identify on the AP exam, is what a control group is, all right? The Petri dish with no antibiotic, what I'm using to compare to the other one um, that I put antibiotic into is called the control, and the control is defined as a set of subjects, or just one in this case, that lacks the specific factor being tested, aka the independent variable, ideally identical to the experimental group in every other aspect. That means that my control, what it should be, is identical to my experimental group, as it's called, except for the one factor that I'm testing, the, the independent variable. Okay, so this is my control group, and I use this as an experiment, or excuse me, as a uh, comparison in my experiment to, uh, to the, what I call the experimental group, meaning that, like, hmm, I wonder what happens if I add antibiotic to this one. Okay, so this is what we call our control group. 
And more specifically, what you might see on the AP exam is like identify a negative control, and that's what that negative control is. It's a sample that is treated in the same as the others, but it's not expected to change. All right, a positive control is something different. Um, I don't believe it's going to ask you to uh, identify a positive control, but I'll tell you about it anyway. Um, so like a positive control would be, okay, pretend if I did this experiment and I found that X antibiotic affects uh, bacterial growth in, such, in this way, right? It reduces antibiotic, or excuse me, bacterial growth by this much. Um, if I were to test another antibiotic, so let's say, let's call it Z antibiotic, um, and then I were to compare Z to X, okay, if I know how X works already, X would be a positive control and Z would be my experimental group. Okay, so a positive control is something that you already kind of tested. Um, yeah, and that you're, you're, you're adding an independent variable to, but you already know the result of it. Okay, um, I don't think you're going to be asked about positive control groups, but still, just, uh, just in case you do. All right, um, so here's the results of my experiment, and uh, let's figure this out. Okay, does the independent variable have a, an effect on the dependent variable? All right, so recall for a second what was our independent variable, what was our dependent variable. Um, so if you remember that, okay, our independent was the antibiotic, our dependent is the number of E. coli bac uh, bacteria colonies. So does it have an effect on uh, E. coli growth? Yes, yes it does. Look, I only got two colonies over here, and I got, I don't know, like 24 of them over here. Um, so yes, it clearly does, right? All right, so uh, let's practice identifying a control here. It says, for the following group of questions, first study the description of the data and then choose one of the best answers to each question and following and fill it in the corresponding. Okay, you know it. All right, to study the actions of enzyme catalyze on hydrogen peroxide, students performed the following experiment. Catalase was extracted from potatoes by blending raw potatoes in a blender with a cold distilled water. The filtrate was stored on ice. The following hydrogen peroxide solutions were made, 1%, 5%, 10%, and 15%. Filter paper discs were soaked in the catalase filtrate and dropped into beakers containing the various solutions. The activity of the enzyme was measured by the amount of time it took for the discs to float to the surface of the solution on the bubbles produced by the reaction. The following data were obtained. Which of the following experimental designs should the students use as a control for the experiment? All right, so which one should be a control? Which one does not have the independent variable um, in this experiment? Take a second if you want to answer it. I'm going to move on and I'm going to show you. It is A. All right, why is it A? Because a beaker of water would not have any hydrogen peroxide in it, okay? So that means that it would be kind of 0% hydrogen peroxide, and that would serve as a viable control for this experiment. All right, I'm going to try and wrap up this video here in the last couple minutes. Uh, 3D is not assessed on the AP exam, but this should be a skill that you should learn uh, throughout the AP biology course. So your instructor should be doing labs with you and that kind of thing, where you do make observations or collect data from representations of laboratory setups or results. All right, you should already be doing that in your class. It's not in the AP exam. All right, but what is, is 3.E, which is proposing a new or next investigation based on an evaluation of the evidence from an experiment and an evaluation of the designs or methods of an experiment. All right, so w what you should also be doing in your labs is like, okay, how could we extend from this? Science is an ongoing process, hence this image over here. Um, it's, we always got to learn something new, so there's always some kind of experiment that you could base off the results of the old one. Right, so these are questions that you could ask yourself. What new investigation should be based off the results of another? All right, if I got this result, okay, why did I get that result? You could base another experiment off of that. All right, um, and or you could uh, test another independent variable on the dependent variable. That would be a good way to uh, expand your knowledge and uh, propose a new investigation as well. All right, what if you tested something else, and what if? Why did I get the results that I did? There's two points that you could uh, start an experiment off of. And another one is like, how could the experiment be improved, right? Maybe the procedure was not very airtight. Uh, maybe you didn't control your variables very well, meaning that like maybe some other things between your two groups were, were altering what your independent variable, or excuse me, your dependent variable, like say, for example, with the bacteria, right? Um, maybe they had different growth medium or something like that. How could you improve this experiment? How could you expand on it? How could you make it better so that the independent only affects the dependent? Um, that's something else you could do for a next investigation. You could always have a larger sample, all right? That's always a go-to, right? You could have a larger sample. You could have more test subjects or more groups um, and more data to collect to uh, draw a comparison between the independent and dependent. That is always a good go-to, right? So this one is like, all right, where could you go based off of uh, a previous experiment. All right, and here's our last um, 
Sample question. All right, it says water in a pond contaminated with the weed killer atrazine is suspected of inhibiting metamorphosis in northern leopard frogs. A team of scientists collected fr fertilized nor northern leopard frogs from a different pond that is not contaminated. Which of the following is the best experimental design to determine whether atrazine is responsible for inhibiting metamorphosis in northern leopard frogs? All right. Um, so what's, uh, what's an experiment that could be based off of this observation? This is 3.E here. Uh, what are we testing and how could we test it? Um, that is all about experimental design. All right, so uh, this is based on the results of, or coming up with a new experiment based off the results of another. Take a second, pause it, see if you can't solve it for yourself. If not, I'm going to go on and guess what? The answer is A again. This is three A's in a row. But uh, if you place half of the fertilized eggs in a pool of water with the same concentration of atrazine as the contaminated pond and place the other half of the fertilized eggs in a pool of water that has no atrazine, there's your control. Hey, the atrazine is your independent variable, and your dependent variable is the development of the embryos of the metamorphosis into adulthood. How many of those frogs metamorphosize into adults? Because um, that's that problem um, that was outlined in the, uh, in the text up here. Okay, these other ones aren't quite... Um, either measuring the effect of the independent on the dependent, or they don't have a control. Um, but yeah, A is the way to go on this one. All right, I'm going to have to wrap up this video. Please let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you next time.